Okay, it really is a perfect day for a landing. Uh, at this moment, Challenger is somewhere south of Houston, about 50 miles south of Houston. This is a new ground track. Obviously, it's always come in over the West Coast. Now it's coming in over the Gulf of Mexico. In just a couple of minutes, it will come out of blackout. We should be hearing from the astronauts. And they will be crossing the Gulf in about, uh, oh, a total of six minutes to cross the entire Gulf of Mexico. And then they will come in over Florida, across the West Coast of Florida, and then here into the Cape itself. Uh, it is, as we say, rather a perfect day for landing. Absolutely no problems there. The, okay, a little bit less than uh, 15 minutes to go, and it will be touching down right here in Florida. And the weather is absolutely perfect. Scattered clouds, very, very light winds, around six knots, very good visibility. Uh, the temperature is around 59. Earlier, John Young, the astronaut, flew the weather plane. He reported there was patchy ground fog. He reported that to Vance Brand, the commander. Brand said he understood. Now that's been reduced to intermittent wisps, which are transparent, so there will be a landing. My colleagues at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, joining us today, ABC News science editor Jules Bergman and Gene Cernan. Gene, uh, John Young said he would land on a day like this. I suppose you would do it, too. Well, I would do it, and I think Vance Brand's going to do it today because he's committed. He did indeed pass uh, just south of Houston a few moments ago, and in the course of our conversation here, has already passed New Orleans. He was moving at 16 times the speed of sound, and uh, he would be taking a course that carries him just offshore of the uh, Gulf Coast of the United States, crossing uh, the Florida Peninsula, uh, still at about four times the speed of sound and 100,000 feet. Uh, he will uh, uh, make a left turn out over the ocean and land to the southeast on runway 15 in Florida. And here we have a, a picture of that runway in animation. Uh, Jules, I think you've uh, landed a simulated flight here yourself. I landed a real flight there, Gene, and it's one of the best, longest and best runways in the country. But the essential point to make here is that it's 15,000 feet long and no shuttle and any landing has ever used more than 12,000 feet. That's, where, that's what really counts. In fact, Jules, it's exactly the same length as that concrete strip at Edwards Air Force Base where they have landed before. That's right, Lynn. Jim, isn't it the T-38 uh, view of the runway? That's one of our T-38s doing a simulated shuttle approach, uh, which we practice quite often there. Well, Lynn, uh, we're turning the shuttle over to you very quickly because Challenger will certainly be overhead uh, in just a few more moments. Okay, Gene, and of course that was Jim Bajan, a shuttle astronaut, sitting with Jules and Gene in Houston, and we'll get back to... Uh, hear his comments a little bit later too incidentally just one quick note there are no alligators on the runway there was a special team out there actually sweeping the runway to make sure no alligators or wild creatures got on it to um, disturb the landing gear or get in the way so we seem to think everything is all set for the landing at this moment in oh just about uh, 12 minutes or so from now and our coverage of the space shuttle challenger will continue in a moment. The astronauts have been heard from. They are approaching the coast of Florida. They're a little bit, uh, oh, just east of New Orleans and about to come over the coast of Florida. As I say, it'll be a little bit less than 10 minutes before they actually land for the first time here at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. And for this first uh, Florida landing, uh, there's been some talk. Is it safe? Is it not safe? Well, Vance Brand, who's the commander of this mission of the shuttle, gave us his thoughts about that before he lifted off. I believe uh, landing uh, at the Cape is uh, every bit as safe as uh, landing on the runway at Edwards. Uh, we've landed on dry lake bed up till now. That gives, uh, that gives a safety edge. But uh, of course my last landing was on the runway at Edwards and I feel that landing on the runway at the Cape uh, is equally safe. Well, uh, Gene Cernan, you have landed at the Cape as well. What do you think? Is it? Uh as safe as Vance Brands as it's going to be? I, I, I think so, Lynn. Uh, he isn't surrounded by desert. As you mentioned, they swept the alligators off. But you know, uh, if you miss a runway, whether you're in the desert or in the, uh, in the jungles, it's, it's going to be a bad day. Uh, the, the record, obviously, the controllability of the spacecraft has been so excellent uh, in all the preceding uh, missions that I don't think Vance will have any problem at all. Uh, landing on a runway, it's plenty long. It's uh, 15,000 feet. That's, uh, two and a half miles long, and uh, he's sure going to have a, uh, a good day to give it a try. In fact, the, the runway length, Gene, is not the problem. It's rain uh, marring the approach. The shuttle cannot land in rain. That, that is a, a known factor, and NASA can't do anything about it. Rain dents the heat tiles. That says this okay. make it a bird. The first pictures of the shuttle on a long-range camera. There it is. 
Well, she's coming over coming the coast home. of Florida. Okay. Surely coming home to Dayland. And uh, the uh, final roll reversal. Uh, extreme right turn to uh, further reduce uh, velocities being performed by the ship. Jim Bajan, we've been hearing about some braking problems with the shuttle. Does that concern you at all on this runway? Uh, it really shouldn't. The uh, brakes have uh, worked in the past. There's some concern about if you cycle the brakes that you may have difficulty. And that roll reversal uh, very clearly video, uh, visible on uh, NASA Select. But the braking schedule Inertial is going to be used on this mission. Uh, 3.1. And this, of course, will be the first time the people in Florida will get to hear the double sonic boom. Take air data. Roger, take air data. That's We're told we will not actually see the shuttle until it is almost directly overhead, about, uh, oh, about five minutes from now. Altitude 87,000 feet, uh, sink rate of uh, 270 feet per second. Lynn, all the way down, the, the crew has reported that the Challenger is uh, is performing perfect. Their their deorbit burn uh, was right on schedule. Uh, they apparently uh, have no problems at all with their auxiliary power units. If uh, some the folks out there might remember, we had a small fire after landing. I think that problem is solved also. Uh, landing on the last Challenger mission. Challenger just uh, east of Orlando. Apparently, range apparently was solved uh, the, along uh, with the. Uh, uh, the general purpose computer that failed, uh, which was found to be slivers of solder, believe it or not, in uh, a $15,000 unit or some such thing, uh, some enormous toy. There we see it now. Range 46 miles, altitude 74,000 feet. That's a beautiful picture from a long-range Air Force and NASA camera. Still losing altitude at the rate of about 200 feet. 46 miles would put it approximately over Orlando and uh, just be a couple more minutes you'll be crossing the east coast of Florida making that left turn to come back to the southeast uh, and landing on runway 15. Well then you should be seeing it at any minute now. Not yet Jules, not yet. Uh, I said at any minute. Uh, provided by the uh, long range uh, tracker at uh, Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. I in fact, Lynn, you'll also have a very uh, predominant, predominant double uh, sonic boom there this morning because of the clear weather. Well, I think you're right. Everybody's been told to expect that. Well, let's see. I see fingers pointing up into the sky, but so far, no sighting from our position. Still over 50,000 feet high, so uh, it's now becoming a uh, familiar area. We've got it. We've got it here. In any second now, Van should be taking over manual control. Slide on in from there. That's a, well, that's a fabulous site. That's a fabulous site for the people at the Kennedy Space Center. This is the this is really the moment they've been waiting for to get it back here, so they can service it quickly, turn it around, and get it back up again as quickly as they can. It's got to be a great reward for all the people who uh, who who are on the launch team to see it come back like this. I would imagine it's a pretty nice view for the guys up there too to look down and see uh, the launch pad. You know, it's coincidental. Vance uh, flew the path from Houston to Florida with the shuttle about the same uh, as he does with the T-38 on a weekly basis, except he was a little higher and faster. And the shuttle's yeah. coming back to Florida, Lynn, uh, speeds up the shuttle program because it lessens turnaround time, as NASA calls it. And Vance is taking manual control right now, turning around the hack for the final turn into the field. Okay, the hack, that heading alignment circle, so they get a big sweeping turn. Let it start. You can see how the bottom of the uh, of the shuttle is somewhat dark in the course, and that's from the heat of reentry. Again, the tiles are. And right now, Challenger is heading uh, oh, just about out over the ocean, and it's sweeping into that big circle right over the shuttle landing facility here. There's a T-38, obviously, up there with it, taking those pictures. Maybe you couldn't have painted the sky up pretty. There we go. We just got the double sonic boom. Some squeals of delight here in Florida. Altitude uh, 30,000 feet, range uh, 16 miles to the end of the runway, uh, sink rate uh, about to 250 feet per second. Coming down at a very high rate. Uh, the uh, hydraulic of landing gear valves are open. APU 
APU performance uh, still nominal. All uh, APUs running at uh, roughly 106%. Uh, That's or 106, uh, several thousand feet per second. About 12 to 15,000 feet a minute is how they're flying. The only person I know at this table who defended it that way was Gene Center aboard Apollo 17 was way back from the moon. That, that's history. This is the future we're looking at now. No, this is the present and the future. Now less than 200 feet per second. What a beautiful sight. This is like a painting. Flight control in automatic mode. Bringing with it, of course, those two jet backpacks, which made such history. Boys and friends, a lot of things under his belt now, doesn't he? Uh, airspeed uh, 256 knots, altitude 17,000 feet. 